he's the calling wind. A soldier of fortune is a man called Paladin. For viewers of a certain age, this scene from Stand By Me might have been your first exposure to the theme song from the late 50s hit, Have Gun, Will Travel. It was a weekly series about a cowboy slash investigator named Paladin. Of course, the name itself traces back to a group of knights from the 8th century. Fast forward 1300 years or so, and the name now belongs to a collateral effects interceptor drone developed by the Air Force Research Lab. In fact, we featured Paladin in a Weapon of the Week segment a little more than a year ago. But as we found out during our recent trip to Colorado, the Paladin packed on some upgrades. And that's why it's the subject of this week's comms check. Even when perched on display in the middle of a busy convention center, the Paladin is an intimidating piece of technology. But it's in the air where this interceptor, designed to keep the airspace over military runways and installations free of uninvited drones, really flexes his muscle. So it's advertised as fully autonomous. I'll walk you through the kill chain really quick. So it'll get sensor data from an external sensor source, whether that's radar or whether it's uh, RF sensing. And then it will be queued with uh, alt, uh, sorry, with altitude, uh, lat and long. And then it can uh, be dispersed by a member in the base defense operations center to say, go get it. It'll go out, track the target. Uh, then it switches to its onboard radar and onboard camera systems. And then it can tail the target until told to execute. Since we first introduced our audience to the Paladin, it's undergone some changes. The most obvious being the switch from a Benelli to a Genesis Arms Gen 12 shotgun. The AFRL also worked with Zone 5 Technologies to give the Paladin the ability to carry loudspeakers or a rifle. But the biggest change for the Paladin? Probably its availability. This has moved to field testing, and it is actually is being purchased op uh, operationally by operational commanders at this time. Awesome, awesome. Are you allowed to talk about where that's happening? So it just got recently put on the blue UAS list, so commanders can go on GSA and, and purchase them um, with, their, with their cards. So. For the people that work at AFRL, like Captain Troy Kyle, that step in the process isn't just a box on a checklist that needs to be ticked. It feels really, really good. Air Force Research Lab is very, very good at moving fast and getting technology to the warfighter again and again and again. Um, technology maneuver is very, uh, very fierce here where we're able to connect different types of technologies, whether it's software, hardware, have them work agnostically, have them work together, interoperable. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been great. It's a great feeling. Thank you.